What we're looking at now is if statements, and if statements are a really, really useful structure. If you think about what we've done in programming so far, then we've had line one, line two, line three, line four, and the program is done run down line by line. So we'll run line one, then line two, then line three, then line four, and this so far has been a sequence, the structure we've used. Now with if statements, what we have is a situation where I want to change the order in which I run. So I'll be running down my sequence, and then I want to branch to one of two choices. And I've got branch A and I've got branch B. So I want to do one of two different things, depending on some statement here. And what we use is an if statement in order to do this. And the basic syntax, syntax is just the rules of how I write something. So in JavaScript and C style languages, I say if, then I open a bracket, and at the end of it, I close a bracket, and I have some statement in here, some expression in here, which must end with true or false. So when this expression here is evaluated, it will end up with either a true or a false. If it evaluates to a true, then it will go into the first area here, which I separate with these curly brackets called braces, so open brace, close brace. This symbol here is a comment, so if I put this in front, it means that doesn't happen. So I come into here if a statement is true, if this statement is true, the expression is true. Else, so otherwise, I will come in to here. And this is my else statement here. And that might sound a tiny bit confusing at the moment when I'm just showing you the syntax, but once we start typing out some code, then we'll be able to see very clearly how this works. And what I'm going to work on is a very, very simple game where I can move north, south, east, or west, and I will get given a score. So here we go with our very simple game. So the first thing which we're going to do is let's just make it a little bit like a game. And the sort of game which we're making is just a text adventure game and we're just doing the very beginning of it. Um, it's not automatically going to show us the output on the screen because I'm going to ask for user input as well. So I do run with JavaScript and there we go, welcome to the amazing text adventure. We've got another function called prompt which will in JavaScript get some input from the user so I can say enter your name. And I can then put that into a variable which I will call name. In fact, to make it even clearer, player name. So if I run this now, and in fact, just before I run it, let's put something onto the screen. And we concatenate the text high with a space to the player name. And just remember, we need to have a new line, so we'll put a br tag into our HTML page. So this should ask me for my name, and then it will say, hi, James. Easy. So the next part of the game, so this has been running a sequence at the moment. It's been going line by line down. And we'll also ask it to store a score which will be zero, this will be part of my sequence. And I'll also have it now ask for a direction in which you can move. So the direction will be the result of another prompt. Please enter the direction north, south, east or west. And just finish that string and finish the prompt. So I'm going to get a direction off them. So let's just run that and see that it works. So enter your name, that works. Enter the direction, I put an N, and that should now be stored inside my direction variable. Now at this point, I want to change where my code runs. So I want to branch to different places depending on what they enter in. So let's say that they enter n. So I'm going to say if the direction 
is equal to, and that's what those two equals together. If you remember, one equals is a Simon, so two equals means something different. It means that it's the same as, it's equal to. So if the direction equals north, uh, don't put a semicolon on there. So if the direction is equal to north, then I want to do something here. So we'll come back to that in a second. Otherwise, I want to do something else here. So let's see, if it's north, I'm going to print something on the screen. So if it's north, I will print onto the screen, you escape the dragon's lair. Now, otherwise, I want to do something different. And if we look here, we've got four directions. So I can actually put an if statement inside another if statement, and that's called a nested if. So in, inside this else statement here, so if it's not the direction north, I'm going to start a new if statement. So if the direction is south, then I will here write on the screen, you get eaten by the dragon. Otherwise, and then there'll be some more stuff here. And so again, I'm going to nest another if statement to deal with the case of east. And I'm just going to put another space in here. You'll notice my spacings around every operator, I put spaces either side. That just keeps things a little easier to read. I don't have to do that, but you'll find that programmers normally do. Um, so if the direction is east, I'm going to, again, write something onto the screen, and this time you reach another damn cave. And we'll do an else in case they didn't pick east. And another if statement here, so if the direction is west, then I will put on the screen you fall down a big hole. And just want to end the string there. And end that else statement and end this. I've already ended that statement there. Okay, so that hopefully should be okay. And if we look here, it's also notice how we lay it out. We've got the if here where the braces, so the open and close brace line up, and then this else here, those braces line up, this else here they line up, this one here they line up, and this if statement here they line up. We don't need to add in an else if we don't want one, and in this case we don't want one. Um, we could put in, you didn't enter north, south, east, or west, or something like that. Um, so that hopefully has done what we expect now. And so let's try it out. So we run this, enter your name, and enter a direction. So if I put in north, you escape the dragon's lair. And let's just try another one. Let's try that I put in west, and it says you fall down a big hole, which is here. So I'm changing, my dire I'm changing how I go through my program. I'm branching to a different sequence depending on the result of this if statement. And if this if statement is true, I'll come to this branch. Otherwise, I'll go and run this branch in here. And let's just take, because we've got this score, let's say that we're going to also, in this sequence, change the score. So if I escape the dragon's lair, then score will be score plus 10. If I get eaten by the dragon here, then score will be equal to, or will be assigned the value of score minus 10. And with the cave, score will be score Let's say that I just have score itself, so in fact I won't change the score. If I just get to another cave, I've done nothing. So the score remains the same there. And I fall down the big hole, so that's not as bad as being eaten. So score will be score minus five. And so at the very end of my program, once I've finished with all my if statements there, I want to say document write and I'm going to put a new line there, and then I'm going to say, you got a score of, and then I'm going to concatenate that to the score which they got. So hopefully now it should give me a score. So let's put my name in, and then if I enter north, 
So I escaped the dragon's lair and I got a score of 10. Let's run again. So if I put in south, I get minus 10, get eaten by the dragon. And if I go with east, then I reach another cave and I get a score of zero. And if I go west, then I fall down a hole and I get minus five. So we can see how our program there is changing dependent on what values I get and therefore which direction I go with the if statement, which branch I take.